Welcome to another video. This is one of those problems that I would classify as tough, hard, almost impossible. And I would really appreciate if there's another way to answer this problem, to solve this problem in the comment section, or just send me an email because I would take an easier way but you see, the hard way is a beautiful way because it helps you train your muscles. And I discovered so many things while thinking through this. This problem took me a very long time, a very, very long time. I'm talking about days. Let's get into the video. As soon as I saw this problem, my mind told me I'm going to need a fact because the question says we're looking for X plus Y plus Z. We're not looking for each of them. So I know I will not be solving for X or Y or Z. I'm going to be solving for the bunch, right? So I knew this fact that if I square this, I'm going to get something that looks like this, but not exactly, right? And I also noticed that all of these things are the same. So if I add the equations, I am still going to get something similar to what I would get when I square this. So those were the two things I did first. And I also noticed that if I, sub if I add the first two, I'm going to get the third equation. So everything was very promising. So let me do what I did first, which ultimately helped. But yeah, let's just do it. So I know this is a fact. So the first fact is that x plus y plus z squared is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy plus xz plus yz. So this you have to know, this everybody knows, it's just like you're squaring x plus a plus b and you know what the expansion is going to be. So we know this is going to happen and this looks very similar to what you're going to get when you add up the equations. So it was promising. So let's add up the equations. We also know that if you add 1, 2, 3, you're going to get x squared here, x squared. So you're going to get two of these, two of these and two of these. Okay, so I also know that 2 times x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus these three plus um, xy plus xz plus yz is going to be equal to, at these three you get 10. Okay, let me make this look nicer. So this is what you have. So if you pay attention to what I have on the board, it looks like it's more like a system of equations. Unfortunately, one equation has two variables. The other one has one variable. I mean, it has three variables. You will not be able to find everything, but what we're looking for is this. So we can only write one of these in terms of the other and go substitute in the first equation. However, the problem is I I don't know which one I'm going to find first, which one was easy to find. So I'm going to use letters to represent what I have here. So I'm going to say, um, let m be equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And let n be equal to xy plus xz plus yz. Not that it does anything new, but it's going to make the work look cleaner. So what I have here, so that means that x plus y plus z will be equal to m plus 2n. And in the second equation, I can actually write that 2, 2m equals, if I move this over here, 10 minus n, which means I can make m the subject and take it here, which means that m equals 
half of 10 minus n. Okay, so with this cleaner presentation, I can go here and replace m and put it here so I can say that x plus y plus z squared is it squared? This is squared. Come on, right? Yeah. Will be equal to m plus 2n, which is half of 10 minus n plus 2n, which is half of 10 minus n plus 2n. Okay. Saying x plus y plus z squared is equal to 5. This is minus half, plus 2 is going to be plus 3 halves, plus 3 halves of n. 3 halves? Yeah, 2 minus 1 half is 3 halves, yes, okay. So, all I need, remember, we don't need to get all the numbers here, all the letters here. What we need is just to know what this is what n is or what m is. So really, we don't know which one we're gonna get first depending on the next manipulation, but we just wanna be able to find xy plus xz plus yz or find x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Actually, this looks more promising to me and that's where I wasted all my time because it never showed up. This was what showed up. Now let me tell you what happened. Look at each of these equations. Something kept telling me, why does this look like the expansion of something you already know? But I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't place it until I realized that this looks very close to the law of cosines. What we call the cosine formula. The law of cosines says if you have a triangle whose sides are x and y, and you know the angle between the two lines, the two sides x and y, then you can actually write the third side, which you don't know, like this. It's just that you're going to have an angle, but we don't know the angle. Okay, so let's do an analogy here. I'm going to erase it when I'm done. So look, this is the cosine formula. It says that a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta is equal to c squared if your triangle is this. Let's put the triangle here. We call this A, we call this B, and this is the angle theta. And this is the side C. That is the law of cosine, right? Let's compare it to the first equation. Let's call this x squared plus y squared plus xy equals 1. The only thing it tells you is that the square root of, that is c, has to be 1. So this is like 1 squared. Let's write it as, because 1 is 1 squared, right? So c equals 1. That's settled. We don't know the angle, but we can find the angle right now by saying the number here is 1, it must be the same thing as minus 2 times cosine theta by comparing. Remember, a is our x now and b is our y. So the only thing we don't know is that minus 2 cosine theta is equal to plus 1. And if you solve this, cosine theta is minus 1 half, and that tells us that theta must be an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees inside the triangle. Right, all right? Every angle is between 0 and 180, and when cosine is negative, it has to be greater than 90 degrees in the second quadrant. That makes it the angle 120 degrees, or what you call 3 pi, 2 pi over 3. So now, as soon as this realization shows up, you know that this is more or less a Mercedes-Benz problem. Okay, it's not, I, I just said it. Look, it's gonna be something like this. You have, uh, you have this side x, okay? 
you're gonna have a side Y. You're gonna have a side Z. One of these sides is the shortest one. Again, when this realization came, I was able to tell what the shape is gonna look like because I had spent so much time, I realized that X is greater than Y and Y uh, and X is less than Z. So it's more like Y is less than X, X is less than Z from everything I already did. Okay, because I was, I was, I spent so much time. But it's not relevant to what I'm doing, but it helped me immediately sketch the shape. So look, if you have this triangle, this is what you have. You have sides X, Y. You also have this triangle. You also have this triangle. Three triangles, such that the third side for the X, Y, which is the example I just used here, is one. This angle is the same angle that this has because the number here is one. It's the same angle this one has here. It's just that the third sides have different lengths. The square root of four is two. So when you're dealing with Y and Z, it's gonna be two. When you're dealing with X and Z, it's gonna be the square root of five here. So this is the shape that we have. Let X, Y, Z be as shown in this triangle. Let's call this triangle P, Q, and R. Remember, the converse of the Pythagorean principle or theorem. If the sides of a triangle are such that the square of one plus the square of the other is equal to the square of the third side, then that triangle is a right triangle. So clearly, based on what we have, this plus this is equal to this tells me that this triangle, even though it does not look like it, is a right triangle. And now I can find the area of the triangle, right? So, um, this is a right triangle. Therefore, the area of PQR, the triangle PQR, is equal to half base times height because this is the longest side. It's going to be one half of the base times the height and that gives me one. Okay, let's get rid of the rest of these. So we've got the area of the entire triangle but we also know that this entire triangle was split into three different triangles whose areas we can easily calculate. Triangles are sweet. How do you calculate the area of this triangle. Well, because we know that this angle here, let's put theta here, this is also theta, this is also theta, we know that theta is equal to 120 degrees. Let me use degrees in this case. For each of these triangles, that simply means that I can find the area of this triangle because all I need is to know the two sides, and the two sides are my problem, x and y. So I know that this area, which is equal to one, is the sum of the areas of the three triangles, which I can calculate as, remember, for any triangle, let's put it again here, this is theta, this is x, this is y. The area of this triangle is half x, y sine theta. Okay? And if for this one is the same thing, it's half y, z, sine theta. Here it is half xz sine theta. So I know that by the time I get all three of them, all of them have half and they have sine theta. So I can say the area, the area is equal to um, one half sine 120 degrees of xy plus xz plus yz. Do you see that? And it's equal to one. I have just found what I was looking for. And that's the key. So the sum of the individual areas 
is equal to 1, and from there I can find what this is. So here we know, so now I know that this is equal to 1 divided by this, xy plus xz plus yz is equal to 1, no not 1, 2, over sine 120 degrees, that's going to be equal to 2 over, what is sine 120 degrees? Is the same thing as sine 60, yeah? Okay, which is going to be rad 3 over 2 plus yz equals 4 rad 3 over 3. And that's it. And that's our n, remember? That's what we named n. So, we're done. Go back to the claim here and say that x plus y plus z um, squared is equal to 5 plus 3 over 2 times 4 rad 3 over 3. What does it say? That's 5 plus, this takes this out, 2 divides this is going to be 2 rad 3. So that's our x plus y plus z squared. So to get our final answer, which is what we're supposed to get, we have x plus y plus z is equal to, here we're not going to do plus or minus, because we know, because x, y, and z are each positive, their sum must be positive, so there's no plus, there's no minus option on the right-hand side. So we're just going to say it is the square root of 5 plus 2, right, 3. How beautiful. This is great satisfaction for me. Now, there's something I'm asking. If you find another way to get this answer, please leave it in the comment or send me an email. I want to learn. And you too, never stop learning, because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.